Good play, engineered by Chip Howard, giving to another sophomore runner has moved the ball to the 43 of Auburn. The Tennessee staff believes that Howard is a better drop back passer than Chadwick, but on short yardage, I do not think he'll go to the air. Second down and two from the Auburn, 43. Runner again. Philip Fulmer, 65, left guard. Beautiful block up front. Now it's enough for the first down. Minute and four seconds remaining. Third quarter, six to three, Tennessee leading. Still no touchdowns in the game. Thompson is set to the far side of the field, flank is trapped to the near side. But they keep it on the ground, getting across the Auburn 35. Rudder carrying on the play, number 99, Eddie Welch of the Auburn defense. Coming up to the half minute mark of the third quarter. Let's watch number 69, Tom, you're out, the senior tackle, fight through the double team and find the ball carrier to make the tackle. Second down and seven from the 35. Tennessee and Auburn territory. Chip Howard. A left-hander. Wills one. Trap could not pull it down. Number 88. That changes your timing a little bit. Uh, when you see him coming out and rolling to the left, they're not supposed to be able to throw it like that. Chip Howard, the sophomore, is a native of Knoxville, Tennessee from where this telecast is originating. Let's see what he'll do now on a third down and seven from the Auburn 35, leading by three. 10 seconds, back to the third. And the option springs Watson to about the 32, bringing up a fourth down and four. So at the end of the third quarter here at Nayland Stadium, in Knoxville, Tennessee, the score, the Volunteers six, the Tigers three. B.F. Goodrich Lifesaver Radial Tires have the law on their side. Post 3060 unit 164, signal red, emergency, at route 60 and 32. In many states across the country, state troopers are driving like this, driving hard on BFG Lifesaver Radios. In their kind of driving, they're getting up to 30,000 miles. In your kind of driving, BFG guarantees 40,000. 40,000 miles of tread wear in normal driving on your car. If you don't get 40,000 miles, take the guarantee back to your BFG retailer. He'll allow you credit for the difference toward the going trade-in price of new lifesavers. And add a small service charge. When we give you a 40,000 mile guarantee, we've got the law on our side. BFG, the lifesaver radial tire people. The FBI tries to foil a military robbery tomorrow on ABC. It's always good to see Old Glory, but we show up for a particular reason right now. The wind has shifted 180 degrees since the start of the ball game. Tennessee could have taken time out, and they would have had we not had this 180-degree wind shift. They wanted to kick with the wind. 
And now George Hunt will try a 49-yard field goal. It's up, and it's good! George Hunt, three field goals today, 45 yards. 30 yards, and now 49 and a half yards to put Tennessee ahead, nine to three. The very first play, starting the fourth quarter. So now Auburn has to get a touchdown and an extra point. Their offense has not done very much thus far. They're averaging only 2.8 yards per play in contrast to Sullivan's Great average a year ago of 8.5 yards per play. So that's credit, of course, to the great defense of Tennessee. To the far side, Buddy Staggers, number 42. To the near side, number 23, Henley. Here's the kick following the Tennessee field goal. It's Henley. <laughs> Statistics at the end of the third quarter. Superiority of Tennessee showing 210 yards against 119. They've had 53 offensive plays against 44, 11 first downs to eight. More important, Tennessee has kept the ball 27 minutes against 17 minutes for Auburn. And now Auburn in the white jerseys. Pat Sullivan at quarterback. Terry Beasley comes to the near side of the field. He's going to play the flanker in the slot. Smoltz is outside him from the 25. They keep it on the ground. James Owens, number 43. Walker making the tackle. You know the explosive ability this Auburn team has, and each time you snap it, you expect something to kill, something to break, but thus far, Tennessee has had everything covered. Vance at four, second down and six. Beasley, 88 to the far side. Smalls, number 89 to the near side. Second and six. There's Beasley. First catch of the afternoon. And we point out for those of you that joined us late that he missed most of the first half. Uh, head injury. And he is a phenomenal football player. Let's watch it again, dual isolation. This is just a short one step down the field hitch pattern with Sullivan stepping back and throwing right now. And he hit him right on the numbers. Beasley is a very effective ball carrier but he was closed very rapidly by Walker and by Graham. First and 10 for Auburn at the 37. Beasley to the near side, Owens carrying. Boy, and that's a hard way to get to the line of scrimmage. Walker, 52. Number 38 coming up fast is Towns and 62. Claude Simonton. Gain of about a half yard. Call it second down and 10, however. Owens has carried the ball seven times for 44 yards. Tennessee leads on three field goals, nine to three. Number 89, Dick Smalls of Birmingham, Alabama, a senior, pulling that one in at the 45, but of uh, Tennessee. Let's watch Smalls again start down the field, and this is why you've got to be a strong heart to be a pass receiver. When you turn for the inside one, believe me, that deep secondary closes on you. Following the game, we'll present the Chevrolet Offensive and Defensive Player of the Game. The award is a donation of $1,000 to the appropriate school scholarship fund in the name of the winning player. Sullivan, throwing deep. His favorite target is out there, but a good defensive play by Conrad Graham. What an afternoon he's had, bud, number 37. He's got much more speed, Chris, than I thought he possessed. He's a six-foot, 184-pound junior, but he runs stride for stride with Beasley. Beasley now coming back to the Auburn huddle. The ball is at the Tennessee 45, bringing up the second down and 10. We look at the defenders, the Tennessee defenders. 83 was Frank Howell. Beasley now to the far side, 88. 89, Smaltz to the near side. Sullivan finds Beasley. He's tried to do a quick turn, but Graham knocked him out of bounds. Let's watch it again, dual isolation. Marvelous timing. On the last play, they went deep. That's bound to have Graham very conscious, and he gives Beasley a little bit too much of a cushion. Beasley breaks, and Sullivan throws. And Graham had given him just too much of a cushion. He had time to catch the ball before Graham was there. 
First and ten for the Auburn Tigers of the 34 of Tennessee. After that 11-yard play, Beasley to the far side of the top of your screen. To the near side, Small. Sullivan deep. A marker's down interference. Graham covering Beasley on the play. And when you get a great player and cover him that closely, very often this will happen. Let's watch it again in dual isolation. Beasley on the left of the screen. Sullivan dropping back. Big rush by Tennessee. Beasley turns it on. The ball is coming in over his head. And the referee must have ruled that that was face guarding because he obviously did not touch Beasley. But you're not face guarding, waving your hand in front of the man's eyes is interference, but it's a highly, highly technical call, and uh, the crowd disagrees. Both players have equal opportunity to go for the ball. 12-22 remaining in the ball game. Tennessee leads on three tremendous George Hunt field goals. Nine to three. Jet kick one for the Auburn Tigers, and now it's first and goal. And Beasley has made a great difference to this Auburn team. He was knocked out early in the first quarter, did not play again in the first half, but he's now recovered very well. He threatened them deep. He caught it short. He's had two catches for 18 yards, but that long ball with the interference penalty has put them in touchdown position. High formation from the two, first and goal. Man in motion. Fumble in the end zone. James Owens fumbles and it appears that Towns number 38 he's being mobbed a native of Knoxville and uh, the tide has turned touchback coming out to the 20 wow time out here at Mayland Stadium in Knoxville Tennessee where football is supreme the score Tennessee 9 Auburn three. This is a totally different kind of razor blade. It makes shaving easy. Now, I wouldn't dare do this with an ordinary blade, but Wilkinson has reinvented the razor blade, the bonded blade, bonded permanently at the precise shaving angle and exposure. But don't do it this way. Use the handle that comes with it. It's even easier, safer too. The Wilkinson bonded shaving system. It makes shaving easy. If you think shaving your chin is hard, how do you think I feel? Up here, you really worry when the razor drags or pulls or scrapes. No more. I hardly feel this shave. I'm using Rapid Shave's new lubricating lather. It puts a coating of lubrication between skin and blade so the razor slides like a sled on snow. Smooth. How does it look? Rapid Shave's new lubricating lather. When it comes to your chin, use your head. Oh, the first, first three minutes of the fourth quarter have really been exciting. Interference, first and goal at the two for Auburn. A fumble by Owens recovered by Towns, and Tennessee has it back at the 20. First down. Chip Howard pulling the signals, giving to Watson his fullback. Let's watch the fumble. I thought Owens might have been over before he dropped the ball, and the that, of course, would have been a touchdown, but as you can see here, his left arm goes up too high. He never does get control of the football. It's bouncing around in his abdomen. It hits the ground. It was bounced into the end zone where it was recovered, and Tennessee has prevented the touchdown because of the fumble. Second down at five now. Nine to three, Tennessee leading. Bill Rudder. 36 in the white jersey, Gene Walker. Number 19, Dave Beck, defensively for the Auburn Tigers. Rudder. And just be short of the first down, or is he? No, the nose is beyond the stake. First down, Tennessee. Auburn has won 11 in this rivalry that began in 1900. Tennessee 10 with one tie. Going to the far side, number 90, Joe Thompson. Jeff Howard. 
And the lefty gets three yards. Right in front of the Auburn bench, John Hayworth forcing him out. Chip Howard from Knoxville, 6'2", 166 pounds. And left-handed, uh, which changes the timing for the defense. In his backfield, he has Watson, 31, Rudder, 36, and Trot, 88, who is the flanker coming to the near side of the field now, along with number 90, Joe Thompson. Chip Howard protects that football when he runs a little bit better than Chadwick, tugging it into that midsection, and this time he carried it out to the 39, a gain of six, third and one. And that uh, wide open formation was slot back and then splitting out the tight end, Tyler, who was giving the defense of Auburn some real problems. In order to get out with all the wide receivers, they leave themselves open on the corner. There's Howard coming over to talk to head coach Bill Battle, who is an Alabama graduate, 29 years old. It all started in 1869. Now, each week, it's college football on ABC. The score, Tennessee 9, Auburn 3. Welcome to the Metropolitan Opera House in New York. Curtain time is still hours away. While it's quiet, Texaco, the company that has been broadcasting the opera for over 30 years, would like to take you on a tour of the house. Behind the scenes, the hundreds of details that go into each performance are carefully pulled together. Detailed set designs, costumes, lights, props all to enhance the pleasure of you, the opera audience. We hope having seen this will add to your listening pleasure when our Texaco radio broadcasts begin again on December 11th. Kurt Watson, number 31, with a bruised leg, out of the lineup now. Bill Rudder is in, 36. At tailback, Steve Chancey. Third down and one now for Tennessee. At their own 39, they lead nine to three. We've had four field goals in the game. Going for the yard, Steve Chancey, sophomore. In the backfield, there are three sophomores for Tennessee. And a junior. You're not supposed to be able to make it inside against that gap eight defense that was played that time by Auburn, but uh, if you go up and over, there's always there a little room. Excuse me, bud. There you see Watson, 31, replacing Chancey. So it's 31 Watson, 36 Rudder, 88 Trap, and number 12, Chip Howard. With the ball at the 41, first down. 10 minutes, 22 seconds remaining in the ball game. Tennessee leads 9 to 3. Well, for a skinny boy, he has courage. 166 pounds, and he can move. Moves it into Auburn territory to about the 49. Dave Beck upended Chip Howard. And I would say he's got some future, Chris. What you're looking yes. for in a quarterback, in addition to the ability to control the team and throw the ball well, is the ability to take a bad play and make it into a good play, which is what Chadwick just did. However, he did bruise his leg on that tackle by Beck. Howard, pardon me. Chip Howard from the famous Howard family. Out of the lineup now, Chadwick back in from the 49. Nine and a half minutes remaining in the ball game. Here's Chadwick for the more yards. Going into the game, we were talking a great deal about the fine offense played by both teams, but uh, thus far it's been a bitter, grueling defensive battle. We've had uh, four field goals kicked in the game, but no touchdowns, and they're hitting on every single snap of the ball. First down, Tennessee at the 45 of Auburn, coming up to the nine-minute mark of the ball game. Joe Thompson, 90 to the far side, and the slot truck, number 88. Chadwick, the runner. Rudder gained about four more yards because of a great block by Watson. Let's see it. 
This year, the wide men cannot block from the outside. So watch how well he sets up here and lets the man come into him, the outside men peeling back. He just keeps his feet here, moving to the outside. Marvelous blocking. It's awfully hard to stay with a retreating man. The line blocking is what sets up the option, and you've got them cut off at the corner, and then you pitch it. You're out around. All right. Second down and three play. Rudder stopped by Bob Brown. Sibley also went on the play for the Auburn defense at the 35. Well, it's less than a yard for a Tennessee first down with third down coming up. Nine to three to score. There you see what they need. A little less than the length of a football. And a quarterback is Dennis Chandler replacing Chip Howard who looked as though he got a muscle bruise on the leg after a good run. The power eye reported that Howard is okay. And first down by Chadwick, the junior. Tennessee has rushed the ball 50 times, 216 rushing yards. And, well, there's one of the youngest Tigers, and not too happy. He realizes that, uh, already Tennessee is perhaps in field goal range, and uh, one more first down, they certainly will be. A nine-point lead looks an awful lot better than a six-point lead. 7.54 left in the game. From the 34, first down. Watson blocking. He was in. Stan Trott of Montgomery, Alabama. Knocked out by Dave Beck. And Tennessee's drive, which began at the 20, following a fumble recover in the end zone, has now gone to the 22 of Auburn. Thompson to the left. 88, Trot in the slot. Gary Fowler is the split tight end to the near side. Fowler blocking. Watson running. Beck and Simmons working on number 31. Let's watch it again in slow motion. It was marvelous execution of the option play. Pitch comes back to Watson. And all he's got to do is run with the ball. They wiped everybody out so well. This will be the 14th play in this sustained drive by Tennessee. Slot formation to the far side. Second down and two from the 14 of Auburn. Marker down. Early movement in the Tennessee backfield. The pressure has really been on the Auburn defense. Tennessee has run a total of 65 plays. When you've given an all-out effort 65 times like that Auburn defense that has, it's beginning to wear a little bit. Last week, Auburn walloping Chattanooga. Last week, Tennessee downing California of Santa Barbara. And next week, Auburn will host Kentucky. While Tennessee will go to Gainesville to play the University of Florida. And with the former coach here, Doug Vickie of Florida now, that'll be uh, another rivalry to be renewed. But there's hardly any as fierce as the one between Auburn and Tennessee. Now with the ball at the 19, it's going to be a second down and seven. Great desire by the sophomore, Bill Rudder from Winchester, Tennessee. In on the play. Number 69, Tommy, you're out. And Auburn fighting the clock, fighting field position, and a big third down. Third down and two now. Nine to three. Tennessee leading on three field goals, 45 yards, 30. And one of 49 by George Hunt. Jet picked a 28-yarder for Auburn. Loose ball, Auburn recovers. Six minutes, seven seconds left in the game, and the Tennessee drive is stopped as Bill Lucka 
of Memphis, Tennessee, a sophomore, recovered the loose ball. And we've had back-to-back -back fumbles that have prevented scores. There's just uh, almost no question that Hunt would have been able to hit the field goal from there to put his side nine points ahead. But a few moments ago, Auburn fumbled the ball from the one-yard line into the Tennessee end zone. Now Auburn. Beasley at the bottom of your screen, number 88. From the 13, first down, and it goes to Beasley. Quick hitting play. He is down at about the 21 for eight yards. David Allen on the tackle. They mark it at the 20, second down and three for Auburn, trailing by six points. Smalls to the far side. Sullivan. What a catch by Smalls. Nick Smalls, a senior from Birmingham. Let's watch the play again. We have a penalty being discussed. Great catch. This is Smalls coming down the field. You can see him make the inside break. Sullivan really laid it on the target that time. Let's see if we can see the holding penalty once again. The magic of videotape. I believe it was against Beasley, and I would do all that I could, Chris, to keep Beasley from getting across the line of scrimmage right, right now if I were coaching the Tennessee team. We don't have time to show you the magic of videotape at the moment. Or Auburn trailing by six. It's first and ten at the 44. Sullivan drills one. What a catch by Smalls again, number 89. Sullivan beginning to find his timing now. Smalls, little wrinkle in and out. And there comes that pass right on the target. And he's hit very hard, but he hangs onto the ball. That play went from the 44 of Auburn to the 35 of Tennessee. We have five minutes, eight seconds left in the game. Smalls is to the far side. Beasley opposite. Sullivan losing the handle, but covered the ball. 12 for 29, 123 yards, and we're seeing now the brilliance of this great player. The percentage is even up if you really got that class. Uh, now and again, Earl Palmer shoots a bad round, but the percentages come back to him just as they are to Sullivan. Very good parallel, bud. Sullivan has hit on six of his last seven passes. Now, second down and 10 at the 35. There's Beasley breaking away. Beasley mm. to the 16. 19 yards as Nettles and Walker zero in on him. Let's watch it again. Sullivan dropping straight back. Beasley driving down the field. There's that timing. He stops. Tennessee defense had to go back. And now watch this boy's moves. That's Allen. That's Bobby Majors. Two great defensive players. He shook them both off. Pounds misses the tackle, and he's finally caught from behind by Walker. What an exciting football game. On the 16, first down. <laughs> James Owens is in the lineup. One of the people at hit him, Jackie Walker. And I mean hitting and medals. Both teams have been looking forward to this for one year. We've got three minutes and 35 seconds remaining, and the issue is not yet decided. Walker with 11 tackles today. Nettles with 10. Beasley to the far side. Smalls is opposite. Second down and 10. The motion under. Boy, that was some execution. It looked like, wasn't it? Looked like a spread out pass. That's small. They call him a clutch receiver. Is he ever? He has been hit. First goal at the five. The execution of the Sullivan in that last play was something special. On a spread out pass, you usually have got to get at least four or five strides before you can throw. He threw it on the first step. Losing battle now. Slot formation on the near side. First and goal. The I formation. Touchdown, Harry Unger. 
Larry Hill, the right guard, who is doing some of the hugging, did a great job at making a hole and a fine effort by Unger. And now the score is tied, nine to nine. There's Unger, number 22, an 87-yard drive. But let's not forget that Walker blocked one field goal attempt and came within an inch of blocking another one. So number 52 will be lined up on the outside, ready to burn in to try to block this kick. Gardner Jett, who has kicked one field goal today. Here's a, for a single point and the lead. 2.44 to go in the ball game. Kick is up. Ladies and gentlemen, Muriel Cigars proudly presents The minute you walked in the joint I could see you were a man of distinction A real big spender I just spent 200 grand for a new house for my best girl Have a mural, son, but don't get the ashes on the rug Good looking, so refined I figured you're the Muriel Cigar Smoking Kind Hey, Coach, since when do you write a Muriel? Since I signed your contract, Sonny. Let me get right to the point. You're in style when you're in Muriel's company. Hey, big spender. Why not spend some time with me? There's a Muriel in the right size and shape for you. Why don't you pick one up and smoke it sometime? The tying touchdown for the Auburn Tigers. The drive off the I formation. Unger following Owens block. Finds daylight. And he's into the end zone. And now watch the reaction. Beasley and Sullivan. Exultation on the split screen. Sullivan hit on eight of his last nine passes. 87 yards, eight plays. Jet with the go-ahead point, and now Auburn kicks off. Stand back is deep. Carmichael has it. Number 11, Carmichael coming out to the 24. Tennessee has two minutes and 39 seconds in which to score in some manner. And the problem of the Auburn coaching staff is to not let the joy and exultation of the touchdown have their players celebrating instead of playing football for the next two minutes and 39 seconds. Southeastern Conference football and Bud. They have a lot of teams, a lot of depth in this conference. Chadwick calling signals. Hurdling over was Rudder from the 24-yard line. Clock is running. You know that the defense is going to be playing soft, looking for the wide play, looking for the passing, and uh, you hope that one of the quick hitters might pop. Immediately following our game, the Prudential College Scoreboard with host Bud Palmer and Merle Harmon. All the scores and highlights of what has been an exciting college football afternoon, second and seven. Thompson. Joe Thompson, number 90, hit hard by Simmons, and Simmons is shaken up. Let's watch it again. Thompson breaking down the field, taking the hook to the inside. Defense is playing deep, wanting to stop the long bomb. He's hit very hard, but he hangs onto the ball, and it's first down, Tennessee on the move. And Simmons leaves the field, being helped off. From the 43, first down, Tennessee. They trail by one now. Leading all the ball game until a few minutes ago. Here's Chadwick. Chadwick for a couple of yards. And we better thank Benny Sively. He had all kinds of rooming, running room had he not made a marvelous recovery. There you see Johnny Simmons, who's had a fine defensive afternoon for the Auburn Tigers, but his knees were so wobbly when he went off, but he's back up on him now. Believe me, you hate to lose your safety man. He's your right. captain out there at this moment against pass defense. It's a tough loss for Auburn. We have a minute and a half on the clock as Bill Battle, 29-year-old head coach of Tennessee, talks to his regular fullback, Dennis Chadwick, who was spelled in the game by sophomore Chip Howard, who did a great job. Wow. 
Ninth ranked Tennessee, fifth ranked Auburn. We'll have them again. It'll be Tennessee against Penn State, our last regularly scheduled game of the year, right here in Knoxville. And then, but in November, it's Auburn, Alabama in a war. It's sort of an understatement. <laughs> A wide world of sports today, immediately following. It'll be the World Middleweight Championship fight between Monson and Griffith. I think we should point out that uh, Hunt, the field goal kicker for Tennessee, can kick them from 45 yards out, so all Tennessee has got to do is pick up another 15 yards to put Hunt in range. He's three for three today, two for two last week, second and six for the Volunteers at their own 47. Watson, the fullback in motion, two wrinkles. Beautiful screen to Rudder. Boy, that takes courage on the part of a quarterback, but uh, to wait like he did, Chadwick did, with uh, the rush by several uh, Auburn linemen. Very unusual play. Uh, he delayed it so well that I honestly thought he was being rushed back there. And he sent the fullback in motion to the opposite side. Now from the 44 of Auburn, first down, Thompson. Oh and trot to the far side, a minute 22 to go. Tennessee trails by one. Rudder. Number 40, the rover, Mike Neal. There's been many big defensive plays this afternoon, but that could be the big play of the game because that puts Tennessee back out of field goal range. A loss of seven yards. Second down and 17 for Tennessee. One minute and four seconds on the clock. At the end of the first quarter, Tennessee led three to nothing. At halftime, six to nothing. At the end of the third, six to three. Auburn scored the touchdown and the extra point. But right now, a timeout at Mayland Stadium in Knoxville. The score, Auburn 10, Tennessee 9. $50 to anyone who will awake the incredible sleeping man. Thank you, sir. Thanks. I needed that. If you need waking up, slap on some skin bracer. Bracer's the morning one. It's skin tightener and chin chillers work like a cold slap on the face. Thanks. I needed that. I really like long hair, but sometimes it's tough to control. Like, especially after shampooing. Not anymore. Control is easy now. I don't want something greasy or plastic. Haven't you heard about Protein 29 aerosol yet? Like some of those stiff girl sprays? Or... No, it's a man's groom in aerosol form. A light mist so you get just enough control. But it's especially terrific after showers because the control the shampooing takes out, Protein 29 puts back. Protein 29 puts back the control that shampooing takes out. All the excitement of college football has unfolded here from the opening kickoff right down to this moment. Auburn leads Tennessee 10 to 9, a minute and four seconds left. Tennessee with the ball at their own 49, second down, long yardage. Oh, a pass in the hands of Stan Trot. Third down, coming up. Less than a minute, 59 seconds. And the problem with the Auburn defense, you don't want to let them hit the home run, the long ball, but you can't afford to let them hit for 12 yards either, because if they hit for 12 yards, they're in field goal range. So you've got to keep it all covered. Because George Hunt has kicked three, 45 yards, 30 yards. Third down, a big one. 59 seconds left in the game. Tennessee going by one. <laughs> Intended for the fullback, Kurt Watson. Fourth down, 54 seconds left on the clock. And after one year of waiting, Auburn is one play away from winning. But what do you do here? I think, Chris, you go for a pass that will gain you about 12 to 14 yards. You don't try to hit the long one because you know that there's no way that the defense is likely to give that to you. There's got to be some softness somewhere in the middle. So you go with some kind of a crossing pattern, an out pattern, and hope to set up the field goal. And they need a lot of yards here on fourth down. 
And about 17, let's see when they get it. Oh, his arm was hit. A pass rush. Number 92, Bob Brown, year out, and Bill Luca putting the rush on the Tennessee quarterback. Wow. So on downs, Auburn. And you know the disappointment of defeat. The terrible thing. But there's always next week. There's always more games. It's not the last game of the season. These are both great football teams. Tennessee will be back. 48 seconds left on the field clock here at Nayland Stadium. And this will be the first loss that Tennessee has sustained here in 24 games at home. Sullivan, what a hero. He's been here in the second half. Went off to a shaky start in the first half, but he came through hitting on eight of nine passes in an 87-yard march that saw Unger score and Jet kicking the lead point. And that's the safe type of quarterback sneak. Instead of just dropping along the line of scrimmage, just take it back two steps and then drop. Speaking of Sullivan, he was 6 of 22 passing. He is now 14 of 31. The provincial scoreboard coming up, followed by ABC's Wide World of Sports, live via satellite from Buenos Aires, Hansen and Griffith, World Middleweight Championship fight. Second and 14 coming up. Nine seconds to go. And that's a very good strategy always to go ahead and take the delay of the game penalty. That know, you know you're milking every possible second and you snap it the next time and this game is over. There is a delay penalty as we look at Dennis Ch uh, Chadwick, a Tennessee quarterback, the junior from Decatur, Georgia. Second down and 19. Delay penalty. Five on at Sullivan. They're ball hawking. Number 62, Claude Simonton and Auburn coming from behind. And what a Southeastern Conference football game. We've seen a little of everything. Four field goals. A touch march. Number 44, Johnny Majors. Or rather, Bobby Majors congratulating number seven, Pat Sullivan, who had a tremendous afternoon. Medals comes in and the display of sportsmanship in an intense rivalry. And this is all part of college football, college athletics competition. Well, Bud, what about the defensive player of the game and the offensive star? I think we'd all agree, Chris, that Pat Sullivan of Auburn is the offensive star of the game. Defensively, it was a very tough choice, but Jackie Walker, the great linebacker of Tennessee, and uh, to Auburn will go a $1,000 scholarship in this man's name, Pat Sullivan, number seven, to be used in the scholarship fund, and the same will happen here at Tennessee, in the name of Jackie Walker. So they have just looked forward to this battle for one year because it was Auburn that knocked them out of a possible national championship last year, and Bobby Majors tells the story. Once again, the final score, Auburn 10, Tennessee 9. The executive producer of NCAA football is Rune Arledge. Coverage of the Auburn Tennessee game was produced by Chuck Howard, directed by Andy Sedaris, technical director John Allen. Be sure to stay tuned for the Prudential College scoreboard. Following immediately on World World of Sports, you'll see the World Middleweight Championship fight live via satellite from Argentina, featuring the champion Carlos Monzon versus Emil Griffith. Remember next Saturday on NCAA regional football, you'll see, depending on your area, Michigan State, Notre Dame, North Carolina, North Carolina State, or Texas Tech, Arizona. Check your local listing for the game and time in your area. Now this is Chris Shankle, thanking our spotter Bill Friel and statistician Jerry Kepstein saying goodbye for Bud Wilkinson too from Nayland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee. Air travel arranged through a promotional fee paid by United Airlines, the airline chosen by football teams throughout this vast nation. Tennessee game was brought to you by Chevrolet, who is building a better way to see the USA.
Bracer. The morning after shave, Skin Bracer works like a cold slap in the face. By Muriel, cigars in a size and shape for every smoker. And by Wilkinson Sword, makers of the blade, stainless steel with a shaving edge, plated with pure chromium. Pure chromium for more comfortable shaves. Dean Martin spoofs spies and the silencers on the ABC Sunday Night Movie.